We today just going to discuss something interesting. Mostly 5G is going towards 4x4 MIMO and much, much more MIMO, but initially it will certainly not go much beyond 4x4. Now there's not many 4x4 MIMO antennas around. Pointing is already designing some and they will come out. But mostly at the moment available is 2x2 MIMO and single antennas. And I just want to give some indications how one could construct 4x4 MIMO solutions for 5G. So the first most important thing to remember um, before you start just putting antennas together is you need antennas that cover roughly, depending on the region that you are, about 600 to 700 megahertz at the bottom. But, and these are the digital dividend frequencies, I think those are US mainly and those are Europe, but it must go up to 3.8 gigahertz. Some of the bands not used, but this is a very important additional new band that will be used in um, 5G systems. So you do need what we call 5G ready antennas. For example, our new x 2 Pol 2 version um, 5G, and we very soon to release the x 1 that will also cover it. Those are already 2x2 MIMOs, but they're not 4x4 MIMOs. Okay, then your best solution. If you just go back through MIMO, MIMO needs to have decorrelated paths. Now the first decorrelated path, so you need paths. Now you need actually four paths. Four so-called decorrelated paths for 4x4 four four MIMO. So 4x4 four four MIMO, you need four paths and you need four antennas or four connectors to be specific. Okay, two paths is always easy, and that's how we did all the cross poles. So two paths, the easiest and always gives you decorrelation is cross polarized, 90 degree polarization, relative to each other, plus minus 45, plus minus 90, both work, 90 degree X pole. So these would be our X pole 2 and our um, X pole 1's cross polarized antennas. That gives you two connectors, okay? two connectors each. Now the only next way you can go is really to do space diversity but there is a little truth that no one tells you. You can actually go instead of 90 away, in other words instead of two polarizations just like this, you can also add 45 degree polarizations. They are only 3 dB decorrelated from the ones next to them but they give you 3 dB more. Okay so you need to space because it's two antennas. So you're going to get space, great stuff. But this is a 3 dB bonus if you also shift them by 45 degrees to each other. So first thing you want to do is you want to space them. If you're in a town, in other words, if there's obstacles all the way around, then you want to put the two antennas next to each other. Okay. And quite simply put, if you put them next to each other, and my quick rule is about 0.6 meters for these type of frequencies. Further is always better, but of course not practical. This is good enough. You don't get all that much if you go further. This is if you've got buildings and things here, bigger type of things. Then next to each other is good. And if you look at it next to each other from the front and say, so now front view, that is one X pole. That would be the normal way of doing them. What I'm saying in terms of my little trick here is what you should be doing is just shift this guy Okay, 22, and this guy 22 degrees this way. Okay, and I think that is quite correct. Then you will get a little bit of polarity, but they also spaced apart. Okay, and if there's really a big building close by you, a big sort of surface, you could even direct them slightly. Say if this was a biggish building and you can see it, you can actually point this guy slightly this way. Don't point him towards the building. Make sure you can still see the same as what this guy can see, but that gives you an additional decorrelation for reflections coming from there. So that's a little text and um, so forth, but that now gives you 2x2, two 2x2, two, two two, you connect it together um, to a 4x4 four four, um, 5G modem, and remember the frequency bands. Not many people make at the moment antennas going up to there. So even though you don't have 4x4, four four, you need 5G ready. Now if you're in a in a plot land or where there's not many um, buildings around you, the biggest reflector, we all forget that, is if you've got a base station, biggest reflector around is the Earth, okay? And the Earth reflects in this dimension, so there you want to 
and the same in cities or towns where you don't see. If you're in a suburban situation where it's just houses around you, don't put them next to each other. Better to actually put them on top of each other. Reason for that is reflections come from here and these cars can adjust themselves so that they, one can get a reflected beam, the other the direct beam. So nice, beautiful, God-provided earth and we should remember that, that vertical separation there is the better one to use. Again, bigger than say 0 0.6 meter, not far apart, but this far apart. And again, if you can, tilt them. Not all of the antenna mountings actually allow it. If you look at the Expo 1, for example, if it's against the wall, nice, because you can just screw them in at a slight angle relative to each other. And remember, it's 45 degree relative to each other. That's why I say plus minus 22. So not a big shift. Don't want to start upsetting the rainproofness of the antennas. If you look at the Expo 2, maybe a little bit more difficult, but please try that. Um, if it's an Expo 1, you must remember that's an omni antenna. You can also put, if you look from the top of the pole, that's actually an Expo 1. You can also point, if you know the right, where is the base station, because this thing is omni, you can also point another one actually in a slightly different direction, okay? But different height as well, okay? And different polarization. Just give yourself all of the necessary options to do so.